in the name of the one holy and triune God. Amen. So on this Sunday of the year, this last Sunday in the month of June, it has become customary to celebrate Stonewall Sunday, in some circles anyway, and in the city of New York to hold the Pride Parade on Sunday afternoon down Fifth Avenue. When my husband Julio and I were on the staff at MCC New York, Metropolitan Community Church of New York, our job on one particular Stonewall Sunday was to clear the altar after the morning service and to gather up all the necessary things to take uptown to have Eucharist on Fifth Avenue at the beginning of the parade. So, because we were traveling up from 36th Street in Hell's Kitchen to 59th Street in Midtown, we chose to take a taxi. And as the way things work out, there was there were two sisters who were visiting the city and also wanted a taxi, and so we decided to share. And as we rode up, they were asking who we were and what we were about and what was going on, and we were explaining to them, and they seemed to be favorably impressed, because when they reached their stop, as they got out, the one sister turned to us and said, Happy Pride! And then she said to her sister, They like it when you say that. And truth be told, we do like it. <laughs> we actually like it quite a lot. And there's other things as well that we like and even need, maybe even more than that happy pride wish. We are in a time now in our country where there is a very serious backlash against the gains that the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer community has made in the 54 years since Stonewall. Charles M. Blow in the New York Times wrote on June 7th, this year there is a pall over pride. As the LGBTQ community celebrates Pride Month, we are besieged by a malicious coordinated legislative attack. There's been a noticeable rise in the number of anti-LGBTQ bills since 2018, and that number has recently accelerated with the 2023 state legislative year being the worst on record. According to the Human Rights Campaign, in 2023, there have been more than 525 such bills introduced in 41 states, with more than 75 bills signed into law as of June 5th. In Florida, the state that became known for its Don't Say Gay law, just last month, Governor Ron DeSantis signed legislation that has banned gender transition care for minors and prohibited public school employees from asking children their preferred pronouns. As Kelly Robinson, the president of the Human Rights Campaign, recently told me, the number of signed bills is likely to move higher. There's 12 more that are sitting on governor's desks so you could be at nearly 100 new restrictions on the LGBTQ plus community by the end of this cycle. For that reason, on Tuesday, for the first time in its more than 40 year history, the Human Rights Campaign declared a state of emergency for LGBTQ people in the United States. I recently spoke with several leaders of LGBTQ groups and historians who have documented the community's history, and they all raised the alarm about the severity of what we're seeing. There have been other periods of backlash against the queer community, including with the passage of oppressive legislation, but this one has moved with alarming political calculation and efficacy. That was Charles Blow in the Times, June 7th. I feel, I believe strongly, that we are witnessing in our country and around the world 
a rise of a movement that I call fascist. They will not claim that name for themselves necessarily, but I am happy to award it to them. Fascism is a movement of right-wing nationalism. It is a movement of ethnocentricity. It is a majoritarian and authoritarian and populist movement which worships power as its own end. It is a movement which requires or seems to require an enemy. An external enemy, yes, but also an enemy within. Over a hundred years ago, fascism arose in Europe and chose as its enemy the Jewish people, playing on 2,000 years of prejudice and bigotry. Fascists in the early 20th century united people around a common enmity to a minority who could be targeted who could say to whom you of whom you could say of whom you could say this is your enemy pay no attention to the man behind the curtain pay no attention to the wealthy and powerful pay no attention to the military and political establishment fear them hate them and we will fight them for you. Today, a hundred years later, I feel that in many quarters of the world and in many sections of our country, I and my family and our children and our gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning and intersex friends, siblings, neighbors, are being targeted as the new enemy. We are being targeted. And I tell you these things because I believe them to be true. And I tell you these things here from this place because I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ has something to say to us about this. Jesus said to his followers, do not be afraid. And I think we have to understand him to mean this. Fear itself is a natural and sometimes even healthy reaction to threats and violence and circumstances that surround us. But Jesus is saying to his followers, do not be governed by fear. Do not let fear determine your choice of actions. Do not let fear silence your voice. Do not let fear cause you to retreat do not let fear make you complicit by action or inaction in the triumph of violence and oppression. Jesus said to his followers, what you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What I have spoken to you in private, announce it from the housetops. What I am asking on this Stonewall Sunday, what I am asking in this month of pride, what I am asking in this season after Pentecost here in Trinity Church, I am asking my straight friends, my heterosexual friends, friends, my cisgendered friends, my heteronormative friends. I am asking my friends to make this fight your fight, to take what you have heard in the silence, in the semi-darkness, in the privacy of this place, and proclaim it out loud in the streets, in the marketplace, where you work amongst your families and friends, I am asking you to take up this struggle because as it has been said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. We have to speak up. We have to let our voices be heard. We have to be strong and we have to not allow fear to determine our behavior. Thomas Merton, the monk, poet, philosopher, 
he wrote these words in his poem about confessions of an guilty bystander. Perhaps, he wrote, I am stronger than I think. Perhaps I am even afraid of my strength and turn it against myself, thus making myself weak, making myself secure, making myself guilty. Perhaps I am most afraid of the strength of God in me. Perhaps I would rather be guilty and weak in myself than strong in God whom I cannot know. I encourage us, each of us, to find our strength in God and as we sang a few minutes ago, in ourselves. Because it takes more. It takes more than just putting a sign that says all are welcome. It takes more than just hanging a banner with rainbow stripes. It takes more than just stepping aside a foot or two and opening a space for gay, lesbian, or bisexual, or transgender, or queer questioning people. It takes more than passively allowing for the full diversity of humankind. It takes actual action. It takes meaningful change. I am deeply and profoundly grateful for Trinity Church and all that it has been to me these past 10 years. I am deeply grateful for a church which has made a space for me and has welcomed not just LGBTQ plus people, but people of color and women and minorities of every kind and immigrants and newcomers to this country, not just to come in the door, but to take a seat at the table to have their voices heard in our midst, to take leadership in our community. I am beyond grateful for that, and I am pleading with you to take what you have heard here and tell it out loud wherever you go. I am pleading with you to let your family and friends know, to let your coworkers know, to let your neighbors know to let your voice help carry our voices into the ballot box, in the contributions that you make to political or social or other causes. I am inviting you to use that strength and power which you have, which each of us have. I am inviting you to use the strength that God has put in you to tell, to proclaim from the housetops how much God loves each and all of us and how your lives have been blessed as my life has been blessed being here, sharing at this table, sitting in this space, singing these songs. Let us take this good word out of these doors and into the world. The author, Ivan M. Granger, says this, liberation is already brought about. Liberation is already brought about. What is truly essential is to fully engage yourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Standing, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven.